A call to prayer for a country in mourning. At this mosque in Gaziantep, people are in shock and despair. Some lost loved ones, some lost their homes, and all lost their sense of safety. The Imam saying, we offer prayers to those who died, those who were missing, and for God to give strength to the rescue workers trying to find them. As the prayers ended, out came the blankets and pillows. This mosque now doubling as a shelter for more than a thousand earthquake victims, nearly all of them Syrian refugees. Do you like living here? Yes. Why? I like it. She told me she and her family, all 10 of them, are sleeping on the floor in the mosque. They fled Aleppo in 2012 when bombs were falling on their city. But now they've lost everything again. How is your house? It's broken. Their home, the sisters all told me, completely destroyed. More than a million Syrian refugees live in the area devastated by Sunday's quake. They're among the country's poorest. Jobs are almost impossible to find. Pay is low. And now, a new crisis. What do we do now? Doa's home is still standing, but she, like so many here, worries it's unstable. Khalid says his family is staying in a nearby wedding hall. We are not pretty sure if it's like safe or not due to seeing the numerous amount of videos of people and living the shock firsthand. These are the scenes they're terrified of. Just a few miles away, building after building destroyed. Rescue crews sifting through thousands of tons of collapsed concrete and twisted metal. As we arrived, a call for silence. Searchers listening for any sounds of hope. But after a long wait, nothing. They keep digging while relatives watch from behind a barricade. Then a family called forward. Someone's been found, but it's not good. They didn't survive. The bodies brought down to an ambulance. 45-year-old Ugar Budak's brother-in-law and his brother-in-law's family are among the three dozen still missing under all this concrete. It's been 120 hours, he tells me, saying we get our hopes up every time someone is rescued, but time is passing. He praised the search crews and pleaded for more help, convinced if only they had more specialist equipment to hear signs of life in these mountains of rubble, more people would be found alive. He's still waiting. The last time crews here pulled out anyone alive was yesterday morning. And tonight we heard an entire family screaming out in agony when they learned their loved ones didn't make it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.